Welcome to the third video in this final series of how to use VegPlotter. Now in this video we're just going to cover off how you uh, add your plants to the plan and how you can use VegPlotter to really schedule your planting year. Now the first thing to note is VegPlotter takes a month by month approach. So as you can see here on the, on the top right we have our month selector. So we're currently looking at the plot as, as of February 2016. Now as we move through the plot it will change to show you the, the plants that are in that plot at that particular time. So if I go back to February you can see you've still got some cabbages left in and that's probably from last year they've been overwintering. Uh, and if you notice at the top here we have a little harvest icon which says those plants are probably ready to harvest if you haven't already taken them out and VegPlotter tries to predict when things will be ready to harvest. Okay, We have other item, icons uh, which are relevant to the month. Uh, so this one is plant out. So this says uh, we're going to plant, probably plant out some sets of onions in this month and we've planned to do that. Now when you add plants to the plot you need to take into account the month selector because when you're dragging a plant on you are saying you're putting it in the ground on that month, in that month. So for example uh, let's find a plant to add. Let's add another row of onions. Now you can scroll up and down, you need to open the plant selector menu first but you can scroll up and down to find plants that are available to plant in that month and VegPlotter will only show you the plants that are available. So for example let's find onions, perhaps if I spell it right. So next to the row of red onions I'm going to put a row of white onions. Now notice, I won't put this down yet, but as you move it around the plot, it remembers your row direction preference. So if we go down here, it shows you that there's um, the row default row direction is for that. But you're not set by that. Once you drop it onto the plot, you can select it and change the orientation to whatever you like. So... Also to delete items on your plot, and this applies to bed structures or plantings, just select the item, hit delete, and that will disappear. Or you can select the item and in the planting details menu on the side you can hit this compound spin icon and that deletes the item for you as well. Okay. The other thing to note and when you're adding things to the plot is how are you going to plant it out? Are you going to plant it or are you going to sow the seed direct? Um, so because we're in the, in the winter here in the UK, uh, most of the things are plant out, so you would plant out blackberries, black currants um, as dormant plants, so that's why it's giving you the plant out. But as we scroll through the months, so for example we go into March when the weather starts to warm up, we've now got um, beetroot that we can plant, but we have two options. One we can say we're going to sow the seed out, or I know it's not recommended for beetroot, but you can sow them in modules and plant them out. So uh, it's useful just when you're adding stuff to the plant, just take a note of what's selected. The green is the item that's selected. So I'm going to actually sow this direct. And I'm going to put another row down here. Now notice when you drag onto the plot, uh, it shows you the spacing. So as you get too close, both items go red until you come out a bit further. And then there you go, you've got enough space to plant that item. As well as the spacing, uh, VegPlotter will also um, warn you where there's a crop, crop rotation conflict. So for example, if I want to add some cauliflower from the cabbage family, now it shows you, ah, I've previously planted some uh, cabbage in this bed the previous year. So it just warns you that um, you can drop it down if you want, but if you hover over it, you can see it says crop rotation conflict and it says when, the, when it was in the ground. So it's up to you whether you actually drop it there. The other thing to note when adding plants, if I drag on, let's say I drag on some garlic into the into this bed. When you add plants, you can, uh, not only can you move the orientation, but you can extend out the row. So if you wanted to fill this bed with garlic, you simply drag this, this middle handle down and that creates as many rows of garlic that will fit, as it will fit in the bed or as many as you drag down. Once you've added plants to the bed, obviously if you want to select, if you've added too many rows, you can use the control key and left click to select multiple items and then hit delete on your keyboard 
and that will delete all those items together. Now because we've said we're going to plant this in March we may have decided no really we're not going to do that we might want to plant it later or sooner. We can change the planting schedule so if we select the item here on the planting details menu you have uh, sow outside in month and harvest in month. Now that depends if you have selected plant out when you dragged it on you will also have a sow indoors and, and plant out. So we can change these months so we could say you know actually we're going to do this oh, previous year so we're going to do this in February 2016 and we're going to change the harvest month we might actually harvest it in September as well and update that and that'll update the planting the, the schedule for that plant so as you use veg plotter when you start your year or as you as you, you can do it as you're planting in the ground you can mark out what you're what you've planted at a particular time or you can plan ahead as far into the future as you lead. So you can click this forward and backwards buttons as far as you want. Uh, and VegPlotter will allow you to, to say what you previously had in your plot or what you plan to put there in future. Um, so we recommend, as when you're doing your planning, you can sit with your seed catalogue, work out your, what you want, look at the seed catalogue and see when what dates it, wants, it, it says you should put them in. And then work through the year and add the plants and it will show you where there's gaps uh, in your planting schedule where you could add some green manure or you could you could add a, a quick crop like a radish or a lettuce to, to fill a gap and make sure your um, plot is productive as much as possible. Now the final thing to show you, once you've planned all that, is you can go to the My Jobs page. Now I have a number of plots as you can probably see on here. So my jobs page will show you all the things you need to do in any particular month and again you can scroll through the months and it changes what you'll need to do so it shows you what you need to sow indoors so this will be an item that we're going to plant out in future months and it says we need to sow two seedlings for my plot and here we says you need to plant out two rows which is 64 plants on on my plot and here you can see the onions we planted on the water side allotment Okay, so just a useful way of seeing in a particular month what you need to do. Now you can access this obviously from your uh, laptop or your computer, uh, but you can also update it from your tablet or your mobile phone from the plot or from the garden. So it's really use just a useful way of referring back to what you originally planned or where you planned to put it. Okay, well thank you for spending the time looking watching these videos. We hope you find VegPlotter useful. If you do have any suggestions for things to add or if you particularly want plants to add then please let us know and at the bottom of most pages on VegPlotter we have a I wish VegPlotter would and you can simply say add roses uh, and that will send a note to me and we'll stick it in the list of plants we want to add. Thank you very much.